Alright, so today we'll just be doing another one of our Yap videos and we'll be uh, discussing the ban list. Uh, the first thing that needs to be established is the goal of a ban list and there's usually like two categories. Um, the first one is uh, where a ban list is used to just freshen up a format. Um, and the second one is used to make like a format healthier. Um, and usually in CG, it's just used to make it healthier. But it's worth establishing because some people just want ban list to freshen up a format also like a almost like a new card drop where they might just go out and ban like Gluguic Serpent and just see how the format works with that. Um, but since we just got a new drop of cards, um, this should definitely be used to make the format healthier. So just going to get that out of the way first. Um, so to make a ban list healthy, we should identify what is unhealthy and get rid of it and find out what is unhealthy. We should find out what is healthy, like what do we want, you know? Uh, and there's two things that everyone wants. Uh, deck diversity, which means open deck building slots, various play styles and various planets. And also skill, which means stars, cards and points need to be earned, not just given out freely. So that's gonna be the goal with this ban list to try and make the format healthy. Um, so as well, I'll be putting the changes into three categories. Um, must changes, should changes, and can changes. Uh, a must change is something that needs to be changed or else the game becomes borderline unplayable and super unfun. A uh, should change is something that has no reason to m remain how it is uh, unless you play on the game's downfall, basically, or you don't really understand what the card does. Uh, and it only takes away from the game. However, if it isn't changed, the game is still, like, playable, but there's really just it's not really adding anything to the game. Uh, but it's just not ruining it. And then a can change is something where it doesn't add anything to the game, but doesn't necessarily take away too much. Um, these still should be changed in an ideal world, but I think it's important to differentiate because uh, they might add like one tiny, tiny thing to the game, you know? Um, but they still, they still take away a decent amount and probably shouldn't exist. So, yeah. All right. First thing, Dark Space Cedar. Some of these are very simple. Uh, Dark Space Cedar is very strong with one counter to it, which is itself. This forces everyone to play it at two. If you don't play it at two, you risk losing two staples going minus one and your opponent going plus one, or it becomes a game of rock, paper, scissors if they don't know, um, uh, like if they don't know you don't play it and you hit DSC instead. I don't really think that made any sense, but, uh, Basically, like, if you hit DSC with DSC, then they play their DSC, then you get your the DSC to hit the staple, or you just play Rock, Paper, Scissors, you DSC, that Galaxy Crash, they think you DSC, DSC, they hold their DSC all game, play Gaz Galaxy Crash, get with Galaxy Crash. Um, yeah, maybe that's a better way of explaining it, but yeah, keep it simple, remain banned. Cosmic Treasure is next up, and it's simply just a plus one when it's resolved, which is very easy to get off. It gets off within, like, zero to two turns of playing it. Um, and with cards like KO and Sale Sign, it's very easy from Cosmic Treasure's point of view to go minus two, because if you have a KO in hand, you play it on an opponent's creature, that's minus two, um, which is meant to be bad, but obviously playing KO is not bad. Next is Slush Infestation. Uh, it forces four stars minimum when played in a resource center to deal with, which is already pretty solid. Um, and if permanent resources are being played, uh, it forces eight stars, um, which is obviously super strong. Uh, if the opponent draws it early, and you don't have an out, it's basically an auto-lose because you can't go 2-2. Two, two. Um, and so they're just going to play two creatures and overwhelm you. And the best counter to it is itself, which means, again, it's going to be a staple being played at two copies. Because it was a counter to itself, at the end of uh, Slush Infestation stays, you would see players run the card in the deck but not play it because you ju would just hold it to counter the opponent's infestation, which game became a bit RNG because if you open it and play it and it goes off, you probably win the game. If you open it and it doesn't stick around and they have their own infest, then you probably lose the game. Very fun. Uh, Parallel Universe basically just doesn't work with Untap. And, uh, you know, I built my deck to play it. Let me play it. Um, next up, we have Shockwave 5. Uh, basically banned because if you resolve it, you win the game. Um, it's impossible to come back from that position. Uh, I haven't tried. I don't want to try. And that uh, means you can never play 5 stars seriously in a best of 3, which is pretty lame. It creates like a weird back and forth the second a five star gets played shockwave five comes into the meta the second one doesn't it goes out which is just very annoying to deal with so point to the first change um it doesn't add anything to the game um like it, it's not like other activators where it interacts with board and you need to think about how much board you're losing like points are points points are always points they're always going to be points uh that's just how it is four points is always four points but killing one creature isn't always the same as killing another creature 
uh, that's a comparison to like Beast of the Black Hole, for example. So basically, the skill behind Point Turret, know your opponent's deck, figure out what creature they attack with frequently that has the highest points, play it if they attack with said creature. That's it. If you have triple A on a Point Turret, play it. That's the only skill. Uh, must be banned, it's just very pesky to deal with. Uh, just slows down the game for no reason, clogs up deck building, very un unenjoyable to lose a game because of it. Oh, actually, real quick, like, it's just crazy. Like, if a four-point um, creature attacks, you're blocking four points and gaining four points. Like, an eight-point swing is ridiculous in one card. You know, sometimes people play, like, five-card combos just to get eight points out, uh, which is crazy. So, Galaxy Crash, going to stay limited. So, it's obviously very strong, but we don't just ban a card because it's strong, it's healthy, it stops people from doing dumb things and going, like, five creature boards wide and just hoping you don't have your outs. So it keeps that in check in one card, which I think is pretty healthy for the game. Sale signed. Similarly, is pretty healthy. It stops the opponent just going to zero stars for no reason. You can still go to zero stars, but it has to be a good for, for a good reason. Um, and if the opponent goes to zero stars, you can just sale sign by the creature, and you'll be in a very good spot. Uh, there's lots of nuances as well, because obviously you can get great damage with it, but then your your opponent can get good damage back. So you, it weakens your board presence but it can take away from the opponents, and it's a very interesting balance to find, so it can stay limited. Uh, Warpod Jetpack, um, it's sort of like, it's like a basically a Polysium card. Like, it's almost like Leviathan Crown, and spoiler, Leviathan Crown is coming off, so why did I pick that over Warpod Jetpack? Um, basically, because Warpod Jetpack is more generic. Uh, I wanted the Polysium buff, not a generic buff. So even though it's basically a Plesium card, I chose to take off Leviathan Crown. It's also because the best counter to Jetpack is a uh, Serpent, which is played in Plesium, which creates sort of an exponential thing where if one person plays Jetpack and you want to counter it, you play Serpent. When you play Serpent in Plesium, you play Jetpack. And the loop keeps on going, and that's one of the major reasons why Plesium is tier 0 at a point, which is not something I'm interested in dappling in in the future. So... Next, Beast of the Black Hole, very similar to Galaxy Crash, keeps people in line, you can't just attack with everything you have, there should be some thought going into a battle phase and not just attacking for the most possible, instead you might hold back a bit if you think the opponent has Beast of the Black Hole. Now some people think Beast is stronger than Point Turret, uh, first of all, don't lie to yourself, second of all, Beast can be played around. If you have two man flackies on board and the opponent has Point Turret, the only way to play around Point Turret is never attacking, good luck winning the game, never attacking. If the opponent has Beast of the Black Hole and you've got two man flackies, you can play around it by just attacking with one. You still have one up on your board, which is okay board presence. So yeah, it's pretty healthy. Uh, it's not the most skillful card, let's keep it honest, but keeps some dumb things in check and adds a bit more thought into the battle phase. Next is Planetary Field. Basically, similar reason to Beast. It, it isn't the most skillful card, but there's a bit more play around, I suppose. Um... I guess it's not really it's it's not really play around is the right word, but um you can just not commit your entire hand into one attack, and you should be fine. Uh, whereas same thing with turret um there's just nothing you can do to stop it. Whereas this just don't commit twenty cards into one attack, you'll be sweet. Um and yeah, it just adds a bit more dynamic into the battle phase. Uh, like again, you shouldn't just be allowed to attack with everything every time. Uh, there should be a bit of thought there. So, Triple A, the first new card getting limited. Hold up, I've got notes here and I've read a lot more notes than I remember. Jesus. Okay. So, what do my notes say? I might just read it out instead of freestyling. So, remember that Tara is getting banned, so the only staple activate is a Beast of the Black Hole and Planetary Field. These can both be played around to minimize their effect and to think you auto lose if you play Triple A on one of them is ridiculous. Uh, I wrote that in my notes because I've seen some people acting as if you don't have a triple A for a Beast of the Black Hole or a Planetary Field, you're going to lose the game. Like, guys, we don't have cards that just auto-negate Galaxy Crash for Sale Sun in every deck. Like, you'll be sweet. Um, There's just, like, there's not a reason why you have to have something to negate anything. Uh, uh Everything, sorry. Um, Now, there's also some non-staple activators like Erratic Void, Traps, Firewall, Grenade, and Leviathan Crown. And the cool thing about non-staples is they want to make decks unique. Remember, this was one of our goals earlier. Why do we need a staple to counter cards that make decks unique? You see people, people play their cards in their deck to play the, them in games, which is like a shocker. I know that's like 
a foreign concept to some uh, to some people, but like you play cards, play them in game. Um, so let's let players play their unique cards that define their deck, that make the deck what it is. Let's make the deck building actually show up in real games instead of just negating everything. Um, but yeah, this isn't even like the biggest issue. Um, it's literally played at two copies in every single deck. Like, that's not even an exaggeration. Um, 92% of decks, according to Ranked, uh, played at two copies. And that 8% is because people were trying out some crows and uh, like things with no activators to try and go super turbo or they were just forgetting it uh neither of which worked out well which is evident by the fact that where's the date here a deck has not made a grand final without two triple a's since april 9th 2022 so when you load up a deck you're not loading up 34 cards you're loading up 32 thanks to triple a uh which is pretty lame um and the only deck that didn't the deck sorry that uh ruined the streak on april 9th 2022 was my deck and i would like to apologize i came out and said immediately after the tournament that that was a deck building mistake i should have played two triple a uh and it's not even like the card takes any skill to use uh since you have two copies if the opponent plays a purple rectangle resembling a chaos galaxy card you play your triple a it's very simple they play activator you play activator boom call it a day um like if you need it for a lethal swing later on you'll be right you got a second copy um i don't really understand why this is such a contentious issue I explained it to in every deck. Come on, guys. We don't let this slide. Um, yeah, no, it must be limited. Like, it can be banned, too. Like, I'd be more than happy with a ban, but maybe this is just a stepping stone. Like, because it's such a contentious issue, I suppose I'll just have to settle with the limit for now. Plus, at one, it does have a bit more skill because you can't just throw it down anytime you see a purple card because if you throw it down early, getting that lethal swing can be really awkward sometimes. So... Uh, it does add a bit more skill there, whereas in the past, if you throw it down early, all good, just go get your other, you'll be right. So, Kaleidoscope Warriors, for some reason, has been uh, talked about getting like limited or banned. Um, so, the reason why this would have been tossed up is for APC, which was uh, strong. It was like tier one best deck in format, like two formats ago before the Planetary Collections, and Warriors was that, um, played in that card and only played in that deck. So, if you want to hit it, this is an okay hit, but I think because we're hitting Phantom Matter, it's going to be a bit worse. Um, and it was never really needed to be banned in the first place. Honestly, I think people were just a bit salty, and it's better things to hit against Rainbow Strategies, um, like Soul Trim, for example. So yeah, just keep it unlimited, keep it simple. Uh, Combine and Harvester sort of caught a, caught a stray in the first place. It was limited to make sure Gehenna didn't ruin the game, even though it was never going to ruin the game from coming off the ban list. Uh, Combiners suck right now. The reason why they suck isn't because Combined Harvest is limited. Uh, the reason why they suck is because Combiners and their support suck. Uh, that's a different issue, which I want to yap about at some point too. But yeah, just slide this guy at two. Let those players be happy. Um, and I believe that is it for the must changes. Um, now, obviously, this doesn't guarantee a good uh, ban list at all. Obviously, you can see this ban list is pretty bad. Um, but that's why we're going to get into the should changes. So... If these should changes come along, hopefully it fixes things up. So, Bernard probably should be banned. Uh, the only reason against it is you would have to ban like a, a Galactic Gauntlet or Upside Down Run instead. But still, I think it just should be banned because it's a bit degenerate anyway with Blaze Elixir at two copies like Solomancer and Blaze Elixir and Bernard could be very uh, annoying to play against. Um, so yeah, just keep it simple. If you're gonna, you have to ban something for OTK. Um, so let's just make it Bernard. Let's keep it simple here. Um. Next, we got Phantom Matter. So this one might come as a shock to you. But uh, the only reason for it to stay is because it's iconic. That's the only reason I can think of. Um, and it's actually kind of a good reason. Like, if you throw that reason up, like, it's kind of good. It fits in with the big trio, Galaxy Crash, Phantom Matter, Beast of the Black Hole. Um, but yeah, it's not really horrible if it stays, which is why it should, should change. Uh, but it just makes decks less consistent. Like, this card can be really bad in some scenarios and really broken in others. Uh, like it's got a bad floor and great ceiling um so you don't really want make, make decks being less consistent if it's in every deck um and it makes star economy easier because it's just a free body um and then obviously it takes up deck slots so um rest in peace phantom matter i think you should be banned next pelfam uh should probably stay limited it's a bit like for sale sign body and removal in one just a bit different because uh it doesn't have that weaker board 
but it's pretty skillful. Seven stars is a lot harder to play now than it was in the past. Um, and using it at the right time to go for face is important because they'll be getting their card back. So sometimes using it on a serpent can be really good because they can't get it back. Sometimes using it on a serpent can be really bad because they get their serpent back. Dark Spark, another new one to be limited. Um, it's essentially a six star with uh, sorry, a two star with six star stats. Um, which makes it very oppressive in the early game, which makes it very high rolly, which is obviously something we don't want. Uh, obviously, giving stars goes against one of our goals. We want to make stars a bit harder to come by and a bit harder to earn and work for. And as well, one of the best counters to Dark Spark. Let's think what cards can deal with 270 health by turn one or two. Another Dark Spark. So it just creates another exponential thing where one Dark Spark gets played and now everyone wants to play the card to counter the card. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. A limit's f like a band's fine too, but just a limit because it feels like a bit of a lower impact card and a bit less strong. Um, so that's why it should be limited. Uh, it's also like very generic. Uh, it's played in basically every deck. Um, next we got Skelly Ghast coming off the ban list. Um, so currently Tempo isn't a good deck. Um, and it was only good early last format since people were not playing the good counters, which did exist at the time. They just didn't play them for some reason. And then when designing Blue Flames and Shape Knights, we sort of wanted them stronger so that Ghast could come off. And uh, now it's time to take it off because we got those stronger uh, buffs to those planets. Um, and now Sindo with this should be able to keep up with them a bit. Um, there's also some more counters to it with set four, set five and the planetary, four planetary collections. Um, and Sindel isn't the only viable planet like how it was back in the day when it was originally banned. Uh, without this change, Sindel's probably going to be like tier 3, tier 4. I've seen some dumb people saying dumb things like, oh, these players just always want Sindel viable. Like, y yes, we do. But we want that with every planet. It's not because it's a Sindel thing, so don't start complaining that, oh, Sindel's always viable. No, we just like diversity and having... Uh, as many planets viable as possible and this is a change that is going to increase the number of viable planets so let's make that change same thing with the leviathan crown um uh please seems probably like tier three maybe tier two um next format with uh, if this doesn't get changed which is fine same with how Sindel is fine but we want these decks competing for tournaments making tournaments as interesting as possible and uh unlimiting crown should do that even in the first place, it was like sort of up in the air whether it should come off the ban list. Um, and it was mainly just to like 100% like double check, make sure Polysium's not going to be tier zero uh, in that format, which is why it was limited in the first place. Um, and with set five and the two new planetary collections, Polysium's got a lot more counters. Um, things like Avalanche Overlord, um, what's that other thing? Shockwave 8 come to mind. And I think Shof the Blue Flames shuffling and with their power boost from zone metal and the moon they can deal with big creatures a lot better and so i think police is a bit weaker in general so this so this buff is uh great for it um and that's it for the should changes um and we still aren't going to have a healthy format um if all these changes are implemented like this ban list is okay it is what it is but there's still uh some problem decks which we need to address and the reason why they haven't been addressed yet is because there's like various ways you can address them. Um, so for the can changes, um, and much like other should changes and must changes with extra steps, uh, these cards are should changes with extra steps basically, like they should be changed, but the whole world isn't going to die if they don't. So, first is spoons, which can be banned, uh, probably should be banned, doesn't really add much to the game, it just speeds up the deck by three, uh, like three cards i guess uh, i'm not really sure how to explain it but yeah you just basically get to see the next three cards which means every card you see is going to be three cards earlier than it should be um the killing is not really a downside uh sending to bottom is not really a downside um because you know what you're going to have next i'll say not what you're going to have next but what you're not going to have next which is always great to have um and then you can only play one creature the turn you play this card is like popping up more and more and for that reason, I could see Spoons coming off the ban list. I know decks like Shape Knights don't really like it, but Shape Knights is basically the only deck that doesn't want to play Spoons. Uh, it's one of those cards where you just don't overcomplicate it. Um, and since CG is still 
pretty naturally slow game. There's a lot of turns you play just one creature and you'll get spoons off. So I think it can definitely come off the uh, uh co sorry come onto the band uh list. That sounded like I was saying band list, but uh band list there. Um, so I've heard people toss around the idea of a abomination tomb uh ban or limit. And I sort of agree. I did write like a 3,000 word essay on why I didn't want the card ever released. So I kind of agree with you there. From a strength standpoint, I don't really agree with you. Like the card's basically only played at two in tempo. So limiting it doesn't really do anything except just nerf time post. So you probably just want to ban it. Um, but yeah, it takes away from cool other recursion cards like Forces of Justice a bit. So um, I, I could definitely see it being limited or banned. And Again, it'd, it'd be fine. Oh, band is probably a bit too far, maybe. Just hitting tempo a bit too much. But yeah, it is what it is, I think. it. Yeah, keep it unlimited. Um, Beast of the Conjurers. Um, now, this one's really flown under the radar, which is why it's here. And I actually forgot to let Zachner to put it on the form, which is my bad. Um, and it's basically in a similar position as Dark Spark. Uh, but it's a bit less generic bit less strong so that's why it's a can change and also because people seem to like dogs right um so yeah i almost put it in the same category as dark spark um it's very good early game it could be very hard to deal with um only thing is it doesn't have this exponential effect where the best counter to it is itself so that's a one reason why it's a bit less splashable. But the zone gain is very good. And I think especially with Dark Spark getting limited, Beast of the Conjurers is going to fill a lot of those spots. So I'm almost pre-moving something here where I expect it to become uh, limitable once Dark Spark gets limited. So that's why it's here. Um, next, Moltown can probably get limited. Uh, if you get it early, it can go like plus four or plus five, which is pretty crazy. But it takes a while to get going, and I don't really like waiting that long. Like, there's some people out there that I think are overrating it a bit too much, saying it needs to be banned, saying it's, like, one of the most broken cards ever and stuff. Um, I don't think it's a strong card. I actually think it was pretty well balanced. Uh, I sort of stand by that. I still think it's pretty well balanced. Um, I'm almost getting, like, peer pressured into chucking it on the limited list here a bit. But, uh, yeah, just because it's, like, super broken early to make games a bit fairer, I think limiting it reduces the amount of times you get it early, which is uh, pretty healthy. And you can't really go wrong with that, I don't think. Um, and erratas, yeah. So I've also got some potential erratas that I'll quickly go over. First is changing Lionel from free to cost. Uh, this is basically just going to make the uh, Shape Knight player spend like four to ten extra stars a game. So it's just like a nerf that way. Um, next is putting four star in front of Knight on um United. Basically keeping it in the Knight archetype and not splashed in the Shape Knight archetype, which I did not see in the balancing program, uh, in the balancing, when we were like balancing the cards and stuff. Unfortunately, because it's very good with Shape Knights and makes them much quicker, makes their loop, uh, like looping Squawn Hex Tor much more oppressive, which is not good. I think just the two loops with Polygrand is enough, even like a Tomb, uh, Abomination Tomb to get back a Squawn, even that can be enough. So I think United, uh, is good uh would, it would be good to get this rudder and then largey getting once per game in front uh saves it from getting banned because the only issue with largey i'm not i i'm i have no clue how i didn't think of this in the design process i just never considered bringing it back off tower but you can get it if you get one largey attack search tower play that tower the next turn get um your largey back play that largey circuit search next tower now I've just got this infinite loop, throw Jack Ross in there, you've got an infinite loop of two creature boards killing a card every turn, which is very broken. Um, so if these are has occurred, uh, this would be my final ban list. Um, it looks like a lot, It like it looks like a big ban list, I think, but we're also taking three cards off, so I think it's fine. So what, three cards off, five on, that seems pretty fine, I'd say. Um, and if these riders do not occur, then this would be my final ban list. Um, so large you would be banned to stop the loop with tower. Um, alternatively, you could limit large and limit tower uh, to one copy each, but I just prefer this way so that the deck doesn't have a loop. There's just no loop full stop. 
which I think is nice. And Jack Rotawa is like a very interesting two card combo comparable to a Serpent and Rowdy or a Gla and Guwak, which I think is cool for Shields to have. Um, United banned to nerf Shape Knights um, and Hexatol limited to almost fill that void of uh, the, the Lionel Errata to just nerf the deck a bit more. And I believe that is it. And just on the erratas real quick, like, I don't want it to set a precedent where people just want to errata every card. Like, I've seen people asking for a grill ban, uh, a grill errata, like, no, Pally Force Archetype's chilling. Like, if he wants to add support, he should do it in the form of a card, not an errata. Like, should we just go around, should we errata Togma too while we're at it? Should we give Boulder Dragon an ability? Baby Dragon? Should we, our uh, Baby Boulder Dragon? Like, do we just errata everything now? Um, like, no. This sets a bad precedent. Errata should be kept, um ideally to one word or one word change um or i think adding like a once per game or an only once and i think that's the only thing a should be used for and they should be used very sparingly for situations like this where a new card pool dropped where we tried to make them super strong because they've never been viable and i guess now we're toning them back a tiny bit by adding three words here and swapping a word here um and I think Aradas are pretty uh, suitable for that. So, I think I'm done yapping. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you disagree on. And hopefully it was a good yap.